Okay. Um, I, I want to uh, give you an overview of the Teach OSM project tonight and talk really about the wider context of geographic education and and not just the project, but our, our wider um, the wider context for for geographic education. Um, and then I want to finish with a with a uh, brief kind of outlook for the Teach OSM project and and how you can fit into that. Um, when we first started this, it was kind of we were kind of naive. It was uh, you know we taught teachers how to map, thinking that they would go back to their students and and teach them how to map. And um, I quoted myself here. Um, there's a lot more to it than just teaching them how to map, as we have discovered. And um, First of all, um, the context that we're finding ourselves in with geographic education today has changed remarkably, even in the last 10 years or so. First of all, there is, we're awash in geospatial data, whether we know it or not. Our, our phones you know, are collecting data all the time. We have GPS in the dashboard now. Cars, you buy a new car now, it's got telemetry in it and things like this. We're just, you know, we're, Wash in this geospatial inf information. And that has implications in terms of like privacy, security, and things like that. Secondly, um, most geographic education programs today, and this is true even in, in college settings, act as consumers of secondary source material. Um, paper's not so much used anymore. So um, the days of, you know, the pull down map in the front of the classroom, long gone. But um, even as much as digital technologies are, are coming into the classroom, there's not a whole lot of reflective use of how digital technologies empower um, indexing the landscape or uh, finding things and organizing information by location. And uh, some of the things that digital technologies are really, really good at. Lastly, um, we found out that a lot of teachers have, at the high school level anyway, um, certainly not at the college level, but, but at the high school level and at the vocational level, teachers and people have very little formal training in geography. That represents uh, both a uh, hindrance as well as an opportunity for, for us. Um, first of all, open mapping is a huge uh, civic activity. It's um, it's an entree into spatial citizenship. And um, I was happy to hear Anson mention the Code for Charlottesville Mapathon. I did participate in that, by the way, it was really cool. But Thank you. here's, a, here's a, uh, an opportunity, you know, where uh, OpenStreetMap is being used uh, as a community asset. And um, the people who are contributing to this are also contributing to um, just the, um, the, the stock of information that's available to the community and uh, humanitarian open street map teams long been an example of this about how open mapping is taken and applied to in a social situation, whether it's disaster relief or um, economic development or environmental hazards and things like this. Um, there is another opportunity that we have here is to uh, help our students be comfortable with geospatial technologies and not just using Google Maps to go from here to Cincinnati, but also use those tools as the tools of choice. And that includes producing, producing as well as consuming digital maps and geography so that students are actually contributing to OpenStreetMap, but that they do this in a reflexive manner. In other words, it's their kind of their go-to tool set for this. So think of open mapping as, uh, as a citizen science project. It's a tailor-made citizen science project. There's none better for this. And as a kind of a stepping stone to civic education. If you're, uh, I pulled this off of Twitter today. I couldn't believe my good fortune at seeing uh, Justice Sonia Sotomayor um, put forth on a panel today that we spend $54 per student on STEM, but only a nickel on civics education. So that's kind of uh, where I think we have a tremendous opportunity for open mapping to contribute to a broad range of, of civic education opportunities. Um, second point I wanna make about um, education here is that OpenStreetMap is public infrastructure. 
It's a public data commons. And that implies that this is a public institution and we're delivering a public good, meaning that it's, it's open to all, it's non-rival, it's non-exclusive. This has tremendous impact in terms of building local, regional, institutional capacity. And I, you know, I, I think um, that's something that's sorely needed right now is building institutional capacity. And um, I think embedding this into the classroom helps students uh, attain some way that they can actually influence and build and contribute to those public institutions. Last point I wanna make here is that um, we have this huge opportunity here to teach the ethical use of geospatial information. Um, Randy Hale uh, tells a funny story about when he first introduced uh, OpenStreetMap into a classroom of ninth graders, I believe. And uh, a lot of the students quickly found their friends' houses and tagged them as brothels. And while that's a kind of a benign example of it, it really shows the kind of, you know, the op both the rights and responsibilities, but that go hand in hand with open mapping, but also as a teachable moment in terms of privacy, in terms of, you know, protecting people and not doxing people using open street map. And this is key to training the next generation of open street mappers to map ethically. We have a whole lot of data ma to maintain and it's important to imbue the next generation of mappers with this ethical importance. So, okay, that's kind of the context. That's the kind of the greater context that we're working in, in, in terms of you know, geographic education, but also points to where Teach OSM fits in that environment. So let's talk a little bit, you know, let's get down to specifics here about um, the Teach OSM project. Um, 2020 um, is, you know, a banner year for something for pandemics, of course, but um, we, uh, like everyone else, pivoted to the online experience and um, with our partners at American Geographical Society, we started um, hosting mappy hours for teachers, which is just a one hour, you know, relaxed environment just for mapping to boost uh, both confidence and skill levels for teachers in the open mapping ecosystem. Uh, participated in a couple of conferences, our Geography 2050 conference that um, we did workshops with, um, with, Ameri with uh, AGS, American Geographical Society again, and uh, had a, a, a good session, I thought, at uh, the Connect 2020 in October of last year. Off also been offering workshops for educators. We're starting to offer professional development credit for teachers and uh, would like to expand into service learning credit for students. We have all the machinery in place. It's just a matter of executing and, and you know, granting those credits and, and getting a, a means to move those out the door. Um, key to this whole operation here has been executing with our partners. Um, one of them is Geotech Center uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. We um, have done a couple um, uh, trainings with the Geotech Center. And of course, we have an ongoing uh, relationship with AGS, as I've mentioned before, both for Geography 2050 and the MAPI hours. We are, uh, some activities that are, we're doing now or are coming up in the very near future, we would like to, uh, we're gonna have lightning talks and we'd like to have a, uh, a, uh, a workshop at uh, the May Mapping USA event. And I'll let Maggie make a plug for that later. Um, we're talking about with our, our AGS um, partners uh, instituting a summer camp, open mapping summer camp, which would be like a uh, an eight to 12 hour training for high school teachers or college teachers to um, begin to you know, start getting involved with open street map, start mapping techniques. Um, Celeste Reynolds and Greg Hill have, uh, have started a uh, after school club for high schoolers, OSM Maptivists. And uh, this is currently in a pilot phase. And uh, we should know more about that as time goes on. And we can ask Celeste and, and Greg to weigh in on that after a while. We have a couple new partnerships, uh, different from Geotech and different from uh, AGS. But we've uh, started some partnerships mostly to deploy our content, another platform where uh, people can reach uh, teach OSM and specifically reach uh, open mapping education content through SciStarter, which is a citizen science 
uh, website, Citizen Science. It's a, it's a portal for um, citizen science projects and uh, also with Microsoft Learn. So we hope to get our content posted up there pretty well, pretty soon. Um, we are also uh, mapping, I conduct on Tuesday nights, I conduct this, it's, it's a mapping practice workshop. We call them mappy hours. The idea is you pour your favorite beverage and you spend a relaxing hour mapping with us and uh, planning uh, the educational track in uh, for the May, for the May Mapping USA. Um, we could not do any of this without our partnerships here. Um, American Geographical Society, we started um, back in 2016 uh, with the Geography 2050 Symposium. We were invited to uh, facilitate the Mapathon there. And uh, every year since then, we've trained a group of 50 high school teachers, uh, AP Human Geography teachers, uh, in the basic techniques of open mapping. And uh, that's where a lot, of, a lot of our high school teachers have gotten their start there. We've also through Geotech Center trained a number of community college instructors in open, uh, in open mapping techniques. And I've also mentioned SciStarter and Microsoft Learn. They're kind of nascent, um, nascent partnerships that we're, we're beginning, to, um, beginning to launch. So um, what have we accomplished to date? Um, well, I think we've trained about 500 teachers, which is our, our best guesstimate, and um, 1,100 students roughly trained, and uh, roughly 28 projects launched. We are now hosting on the Teach OSM Tasking Manager about 1,300 educational projects. This grows by like 75 projects a month, something like that. It's not the volume that um, Humanitarian Open Street Map team does, but it's, it's steady growth in the number of projects and the range of product projects that we get. So we, we're hosting a lot more projects uh, for um, youth mappers affiliated projects. We're hosting a lot more of those. And uh, those are come from worldwide for that. Um, recurring professional events. Those are the workshops I've talked about. Um, we are all teaching um, at least at George Washington University, and um, I believe at Texas Tech and Arizona State, they're also teaching OpenStreetMap in the classroom there. Um, and California University of Pennsylvania and Frostburg State University also are using, um, um, adding uh, modules at the university level. Um, so, okay, let's um, talk about the future for a little bit. There's four bullets out here, programming partnerships, tools, and fundraising. So let's talk about these here. Um, this, I subtitled this slide here, how can you contribute? Because these are the four big areas where, uh, these are the four big areas that we're concerned with in terms of the program. And um, this is the place where if you have a particular talent, um, we would be delighted to have you join us and contribute to this. Um, we also, um, you know, we have partnerships, but we're always looking for more um, partnerships. Specifically, um, you know, if you're an individual mapper, one thing that you can do is um, talk with your, um, talk with your schools, talk with your librarians. I was pleased to see we have a librarian on the call tonight. Um, talk with your librarians, talk with your school teachers there and um, see what you can do to plug in in terms of training and, and helping, um, helping to promote, uh, not just promote, but helping to um, teach the next generation of mappers how, um, how to map. Um, Cross-promotional activities, we're always interested in that. That's the Geotech Center. We've done a lot with um, Geotech Center with that, our two um, workshops with them. Teachers and instructional programs. Um, we also, you know, there's a lot of content that we would like to put out, but we're not necessarily in the position to write all of the, uh, write all of that content, develop all of those, that content coursework. So if you have a project that you're particularly fond of, um, we're happy to, um, you know, help you to package it up and share it so that it can be used in the classroom. Um, we are offering, you know, as I continuing to offer the mappy hours and summer camp trainings, if you'd like to attend, if you'd like to be a guest mapper on a Tuesday night, I would welcome you to participate in that and share your wit and wisdom. Um, the after school mapping club, um, I'll let um, Celeste and Greg talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but um, Plugging into that, if you're a high school teacher and uh, 
and, or if you know of a high school teacher who might be interested in this, this is um, a good time to get involved with that. Um, the last two bullets here, application development, we need tools. Um, the tool set we have is great and uh, works really, really well for validation and for uh, error checking and stuff like that. What it does not do well is um, it doesn't really work in the classroom environment. OSM Cha, I love OSM Cha, but there's no way for, to put that into a classroom and ask a teacher to keep track of 30 students and all their work without some kind of high level functionality in order to uh, make it classroom friendly. Um, so there's, we need tools in order to support that. The other thing we've talked about long and hard is a sandbox uh, so that um, teachers and students can work uh, in a kind of a temporary environment. It's an OSM lookalike, but at the end of the semester, all the data are wiped clean and it's just, re, you know, the instances stood back up for the next class so that they can, they can practice, you know, editing and make mistakes and, and vandalize the map in a consequence free environment. Lastly, funding and fundraising. Um, we, uh, I'd love to pass the hat here. Um, this is not the audience to do that in, but if you've got some proclivities towards fundraising, or if you are, uh, are connected with funders who may be interested in this project, um, there are a lot of meaningful things that we can, we can connect you with. Um, you can see the previous three bullets um, for what I'm talking about. So with that, I will say thanks, and I will turn the floor over to Courtney. So we're essentially going to build off of Stephen's presentation and take a deeper dive into that partnership that he mentioned between the American Geographical Society and Teach OSM. Uh, so in the next five minutes, I'm going to brief you on AGS, as well as give a deeper introduction to myself, explain how we collaborate with Teach OSM and have a special focus on AP Human Geography teachers, talk about ways that you can be involved and hopefully have a little fun as well because it's Wednesday night, so let's do that. So as I mentioned, my name is Courtney Clark. Um, I have been part of OSM and mapping since 2014 when I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Guinea and evacuated due to the Ebola epidemic. I started becoming very involved with the humanitarian open street map teams mapping efforts related to Ebola and that grew into a professional opportunity and um, all these years later here I am as of April 1st, I just started a new position and I'm very excited to be able to serve as the manager of our Geography Teacher Fellows Initiative for the American Geographical Society. And I'm also the director of Everywhere She Maps, um, which is part of Youth Mappers, which also has a partnership with AGS. So we're in kind of two hats there. And as I said, I'm based in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, just giving you a little bit of background on AGS. And I do want to point out that my colleague, Katie, is on this call as well and want to thank her for all her help in putting these slides together. Um, so the organization was founded in 1851 and has seen many, many iterations throughout that history. Uh, early on in our early days, we were doing things like helping survey and plan routes for railways, helping with the transatlantic cable route. Uh, another really cool project was the creation of the millionth map of Hispanic America, which was a map to uh, a map of all of Latin America um, at a scale of one to one million, and then that was extended to the whole world, which is pretty revolutionary at the time. And uh, we were a leading contributor of geographic data and analysis to the US government, especially in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, this was before the NSF was created and, and USGS and all of those great agencies. Um, and our, one of our, I think, chairman or presidents 
Isaiah Bowman was an advisor to President Roosevelt during World War II, offering a lot of geographic advice and geopolitical advice. So as I mentioned, we've done lots of pivots. And uh, once the US government didn't quite need our assistance, uh, we really wanted to change our focus to helping shape the present and the future of geography and geographical education. So we carry out a lot of um, projects related to those goals. And I won't list them all. You can read them on the slides here. But we partner with a lot of scholars and researchers. Uh, one of my favorite initiatives that we have is the Ethical Geo Initiative. And we recently in March, um, thanks to Katie's amazing work, launched or co-founded the Locust Charter. And we can put a link in, uh, but those are basically 10 principles for ethical use of geographic data for geography practitioners that I highly recommend you, you look at, um, that you check out. And then uh, our big event every year is the Geography 2050 Symposium, where we are a convening body for uh, all sectors, stakeholders across the entire kind of geographic industry. And every year we have a theme to uh, kind of tackle and discuss. Last year was oceans as related to geography and um, as you would expect, a lot of focus on climate change as well. And this year we're going to be focusing on inequality and how that relates to geography and can be addressed through geography as well. That will be in November, so keep an eye out for that event. And then finally, taking a deeper dive into our education specific initiative. Um, in 2016, as Stephen mentioned, uh, we launched the Teacher Fellow Initiative to recognize teachers and bring them to our symposium to gain that training in OSM. Last year, we started a GeoBoost microgrant program, and through that, we offer a number of teachers grants between $300 to $500, and it's amazing what they're able to do with that amount of money to purchase resources, tools, or host different events for their students related to geography. So very excited about that. Uh, we host mapathons and partner with Teach OSM, again, as Stephen mentioned earlier. And I'd like to just take a little bit of a deeper dive into the fellows program, since it's really the kind of flagship of our education support program. Uh, so every summer we will choose 50 teachers uh, to become the fellows and they're able to participate in a year long series of professional development opportunities and we really are aiming to equip them with skill sets related to geography that they can transfer directly into the classroom and to their students and Celeste and Greg who are on the call uh, they actually have been fellows and so I wasn't, didn't realize they'd be joining and quickly in the background was asking them if they wouldn't mind speaking a bit about their experiences. So kind of putting them on the spot, but they're happy to do that. And I'll, I'll just pass to Celeste and Greg if you, if you want to speak briefly about your experience as fellows and um, how that benefited you. Thank you, Courtney. So yes, uh, I was um, fortunate to be in the first group of teachers that was invited to the in symposium. And it was one of the best professional development opportunities that I have ever had. And I've had quite a few over the last 20 something years that I've taught. And I that's uh, where, um, I got to hear the Open Street Teach OSM team and Stephen was there with Richard and I believe Maggie was there the first year uh, explaining um, how open, what, how, why open street mapping or how open street, street mapping was being used. And it, I just had a, that aha moment and um, got more familiar with it and was very excited to be able to go back and try to um, 
incorporated into my curriculum. And uh, in, in also just listening to the speakers was so uh, amazing. Um, listening to how people were uh, using geography in the professional world and being able to come back with my students and talk about so and so did this and and then and this guy does this and this lady does this and these are things that you can do in geography um, and telling them the stories that we heard at the conference which just really brings a lot of um, it, it helps uh, giving those kinds of stories to our students so that they can see what all the things that they can do with geography as a profession. Um, so, um, so a little bit back, I don't know how you know, but AP Human Geography is a relatively new um, advanced placement course that's put on by College Board. And I believe Greg could probably help me with this. I believe it's about 21, 22 years it's one of the newer AP classes uh, and it has grown. It started off with maybe 10 teachers to now we have over, I think Greg probably knows the number, but over a thousand teachers, maybe 1500 teachers where we have over 200,000 students in the world taking the, taking the AP Human Geography course. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that geography isn't really um, a course that high school students take. So this is really putting geography back into high school. Usually you'll see geography in middle school and elementary school, but this is putting geography into the high school. And it's, okay. it, it's become very popular, very popular. So um, the AGS uh, Geography Teacher Fellow Program has just been one of those amazing experiences um, that has really, uh, anytime I see any other AP human geography teacher or geography teacher uh, at a high school level, I encourage them to go. Um, and uh, because I think it's probably one of the best professional development opportunities for a teacher, um, a geography teacher to, to have. And I'm very um, grateful that the AJ, AGS is doing this. All right, Greg, you can go ahead. Uh, all right. Um, thank you guys for having me. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. I got a, some people in the background. Um, but yeah, the uh, AGS conference is probably the most uh, professional conference I've ever been to. Um, the first time I went, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to New York City, you know, have a good time and learn some geography. And, you know, and, and little did I know I was going to be blown away because I'm rubbing shoulders with uh, professionals, you know, geog PhD candidates, um, uh, students, and, and other teachers, like-minded teachers such as myself, um, who just just love the, the 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 field of geography and everything about it. Um, I'll say this: that it is probably my favorite conference out of all of them, uh, because uh, last it was 2019, uh, I was slated to speak at a mega conference. It's one of the biggest conferences in social studies or in education period. It had, I think, uh, 20,000 people there. And I declined that invitation to go to AGS. That's how much I love AGS's uh, Geography 2050. I learned more. That's the kind of stuff I crave and is, is that professional learning that I can take back in my classroom and say, I mean, here, guys, this is what the wave of the future. This, this is why you should, if you might choose a major in geography or something close to it, uh, this is doing geography. You can actually make money at doing geography. Um, and, and that's about it. And I know uh, Stephen mentioned briefly our Teen Maptivist Club. Um, again, it's a pilot. It's a great, it's gone off, gotten off to a great start. Um, we had uh, um, the Geography of the United States uh, on our last one on Monday. Uh, had 80 people, 80 plus people there. It was one of the best ones we had. Uh, there was, you know, just a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, you know, we're building a network um, of, of mappers. Uh, we've built some great relationships with um, youth mappers, different chapters across the country, with the hope of this being kind of a stepping stone. Uh, the kids were just blown away. They were like, we want to do this again. And, you know, we had the uh, Lee, Dr. Lee Schwartz, the geography of the United States there. And uh, the kids were like, 
we want to be GOATIS. And that was, and that's it. And that's, that's our, that's our aim right there is to get the kids mapping. So they can drag their teachers to map. And then we can, we can make OpenStreetMap uh, a better place. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much to you both. You can express all of that so much better than I can. And we appreciate everything you do immensely. Um, so I know we're, wow, this hour has flown by, getting close to time. Just wanted to share a few photos from that teacher fellow initiative and the trainings at the symposium. You can see Steven right here at the mic participating and just also wanted to call your attention to a few ways that you can support this. Uh, first, as Stephen mentioned, you can join our Mappy Hours on Tuesday evenings to be a guest mapper, talk about your own experiences and some real world um, implications or stories related to open mapping to help bring that more to life for our teachers. Uh, we also are looking for mappers uh, from the OSM community to engage even more deeply with maybe one particular teacher in their classroom. Um, we can connect you with a teacher who's interested and you can do as much or as little as you'd like in terms of maybe presenting to their students or mentoring the teacher in their open mapping work. And then finally joining AGS. Uh, it's a very affordable membership, but it is really crucial to our ability to continue this work and continue prioritizing uh, geographic education for our future generations. And uh, we'll pop some links for all these opportunities into the chat as well. Uh, finally, just wanted to very quickly plug our upcoming workshop. Uh, this is not related to the teacher initiative, but it is really exciting opportunity. It's called Geoconvergence, and it will be May 18th through the 20th. All of you are very welcome to register to attend. It's a free event. It is being funded by the National Science Foundation, and it's going to be a very interactive workshop type setting where all participants will come together to really blue sky, what should the future of geography and geospatial work look like? And uh, depending on the success of the event, it could lead to a lot more um, funding for this kind of research from the NSF. So we want to have this broad uh, set of perspectives and diverse set of perspectives as possible. Um, so again, just invite you to join that and wanted to thank you and we can all take any questions and I'll start popping those links in. <laughs>